What's up everybody, this is Reverend Guns, and today we're going to be installing the trigger spring, the sear spring, and the hammer spring on this Breda 92FS. So the first thing we want to do is uh, make sure it's clear and safe, and to do that, right here behind the trigger is the magazine release. When you press it, it pops the magazine out. You can set that aside, we don't need it. Second, there's a slide lock lever right here. When you pull the slide all the way back, you'll push the lever up and it will hold the slide in place. And now you can look down the barrel there and see nothing is in it. So let's go ahead and uh, press down the lock lever. It'll uncock it. Flip the gun over. There's a button here you wanna press and hold and that will allow you to flip the gun over and move this switch downward. It releases the slide. You can let go of the button and pull the slide off. We can set this aside. We don't need that either. Tools you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need an Allen for your grips. I'm using for this one a 2 millimeter. You've got a 16th, a 3 30 seconds, and a 1 8 inch punch. Got a very small screwdriver. Um, I don't think we're going to need the, the hammer and bench block, but just in case, I've got it here. Let me move this aside. Don't need this quite yet. So, to get started, we got to remove the grips. And uh, get access to everything we need. Set one. Two. That should allow you to just pop off one grip. Flip it over. All right, so we got all four screws out now. And the grip should just pop right off. All right, so you'll see down in here is the trigger spring. We're gonna replace that and we have to, once we release it, the trigger comes up through the top here for us to get it out. So uh, first couple things we need to do is remove the uh, slide lock lever and the the trigger arm uh, the slide lock lever should just kind of wiggle out and you'll see you can probably see it now there's there's a little spring in there it's going to come out with it just kind of there we go, twist it out. You can see here, there's a little, little spring. One arm, the straight arm, goes on the lock lever, it's the slide lock itself, the other one is angled, and that actually goes into a little hole. Let's see here, right here. You can kind of see how it goes down into the frame, it just hooks in there. So we'll set that aside, we'll flip it over, and this should, um, on the trigger arm here, there's a spring right below it. You want to kind of unhook it and push it. It's probably going to go inward, so just uh, once it's in there, you can kind of pull it out. There we go, got it to fall out. We'll set that aside. And now the arm should, if you just push it out from the other side, should just kind of wiggle out. And 
which it's not being nice. There we go. I'm gonna pry it a little bit. Got the arm out. Set that aside. And there's a pin right here uh, on the left side of the trigger that we need to tap out. You should be able to just push it out. There we go. You'll notice this one has a head on it. That head is on the left side. So put it back in. That's the, the direction we'll be putting it in. Now we can pull the trigger up through the top. And you can see the trigger spring here. It's actually just sitting in there. It's We took the pin out so it's now easily removed. And you'll see how I pulled it out. It's a V like that. The new spring. Is right here. The old spring is right here. So it's it's the same orientation as it came out. We'll set that aside. We'll go ahead and drop the uh, trigger spring back in, and it lines up with the the bottom hole, not not the top one. Okay, so that's gonna look like that. All right, and now we can drop our trigger in. Okay, and you want the one arm down here to to be on the ledge. There it is. And we want want that one arm to be on the ledge when you're putting the the pin back in. So uh, let's grab our punch and line up the hole here. Get everything lined up. And the reason why I'm going from the right is because we got to put this pin with the head back on it in from the left. And we're just kind of using the the punch as a guide to follow it and push it through and it just pushes it back into place so now we've got the, the trigger back in there and uh, we'll we'll attach that when we put uh, the, the hammer arm back on um, next thing is the sear you can kind of see it it's this piece right here okay not sure if you can see that um, but it, it's right there and so we're gonna tap this little pin out here just a little bit to release the spring you can keep going and take out the whole sear itself and if you want to polish it you can I'm not doing that for this video I'm just showing you how to release it so, yeah, at this moment, I am going to grab my block. I'm going to grab my 1 16th punch, and I'm going to tap it through just a little bit so it will release the spring. The spring is now caught on the, the punch, so I'm going to put my thumb over it and release the punch, the sear, is now free you should be able to see me pulling that out there okay so on the sear it has a channel on it uh, that you can probably see here where there it is the little channel that's where the short arm of of the sear spring goes and then the long arm goes down in this big old channel in the frame uh, let me see if I can get that clear shot for you so yeah Sear, sear spring goes right here, 
our short arm goes up here in this little channel in the sear and then the long arm goes down in this this cavity right here so I'm gonna set I'll show you the difference here and I'll show you in the orientation it's supposed to go so old sear spring on top new sear spring on bottom almost exactly the same We'll set those aside and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this punch in after dropping the, the sear in its spot. You basically just drop it in place. Make sure I can see that it gets in the right spot. The short arm over the seat or on the yeah on the sear little sear channel and the big arm whoops I have it upside down Short arm on the sear channel. There we go. And now I'm going to basically use my punch to uh, push the spring down so the pin, when I push it back in, is going to. Okay, now I've got it. There we go. Caught the spring. And I was able to just push it in with my finger. Yep. Alright. So we are got the sear spring in. You see it's over the channel here for the sear. The short arm is. And then the long arm is, is down down in here okay so last thing to do is the hammer spring so to do that you basically want to push in on the lanyard loop here and that'll make it a little easier to pop out the uh, the pin sitting right above it so there we go Okay, and then slowly release it off. When you pop that pin out, you've got basically the cap to your spring. And then just sitting in there is the hammer spring. And there's a there's a rod inside there that you will place the new spring over before you put the cap on. So I will get the new hammer spring. M Carbo offers a 13 or 12, 13, and 14 pound hammer spring. This is not the pull weight. This is how much energy it's going to give to the hammer. So I'm going to go with the 12 pound spring because they guarantee that they've tested all these and will make. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, it'll it'll not have a light primer primer strikes. So we'll take that you'll find the little rod that's in there yeah I had it okay and just drop it in over it 
and you'll notice that there's a little little ring inside here that's basically that ring on the inside is where the end of the the hammer spring sits when you when you put it in to compress it and put the pin back in so we'll put that back in and I'm gonna use my punch to press it down and lock it into place and now I can take the pin I took out of, of the handle there for the hammer spring and it's got two heads on it so it really doesn't matter which way you put it in and, or which direction you put it in just whatever is easiest for you so I'm gonna basically press down on the hammer cap here and start pushing in that pin alright so we've got all of our springs done we can now start putting everything back together I'm gonna start with uh, the trigger arm so let's flip it over and it goes right there you can see the hole it attaches to on the trigger we want to stick it in there and we want to stick it in there just partially we don't want it all the way in and I'll show you why here in just a sec all right uh -oh. I had a boo-boo I didn't latch the spring in with the trigger the the pin is supposed to go in through the trigger spring as well and apparently I didn't do that so we'll try that again set the trigger spring in the hole drop it in and you want the spring to be in there as well before you put there we go alright now I've got it in there okay so put the arm back in you don't want to put it in all the way you want to do it to where you're just starting to see it poke through see that okay because you want to lift up this rear arm over the bar of the uh, the trigger guard or uh, trigger arm so you can get that kind of set up if you'd like it just kind of feeds in there okay that was easier use pliers when you pull that trigger forward it pulls up just far enough for you to grab it with the pliers and and slide it into place okay so now you've got your hammer spring or your trigger trigger arm now set um, we can put the uh, trigger arm spring back into place so there is a hole right here that the angled portion of this goes into it's gonna sit basically like that okay so get the angle part in the hole there's a little cut out in the frame for the the loop part to go into like that and then you can use
Alright. That goes right into a little channel under the trigger arm. So that's exactly how it should, should go in. Alright, let's put the slide lock. Okay, you'll see it's oriented like this. This will bend back and that little hook will go into a little hole right there and then basically you just kind of twist it back on so I'm gonna hook it first and we're gonna basically rotate and put it in the hole rotate enough for it to get into spot and there it is got that part done only thing left to do is put back on the grips so it doesn't matter which side you do first let's do a quick check on everything single action works or double action works single action works we're sitting good line your grip up Get your screws. Uh, mine's a two millimeter. I don't know what yours is. I just kind of get it set in a place first. There we go, tight. Tight. Grip on, get your screws. Let's kind of set it. tight make it tight grab your upper or your slide notches line up with the notches here you just slide it on I like to go all the way back with it there we go and lock it into place with the slide lock lock your slide back into place and there you have it we have just replaced Ooh. alright so I did measure this before I actually did the video my trigger pull was at 11 pounds 9 ounces I'm kinda curious to see where we're at now I got 7 pounds 12 ounces on the first try. Seven pound twelve ounces on the second try. Well one more time just to make sure it's not a glitch. seven pounds five ounces so I dropped it basically four pounds on this spring kit uh, if you follow me through the videos you've seen me also do the guide rod spring and guide rod I've also done all the springs inside the slide um, yeah that's a, a, a lot softer lot softer pull now Wow that's boom very nice very nice so worth it I highly recommend getting the trigger spring kit I think it's called the pro spring kit from M Carbo. 
fun little uh, way to learn your firearm and see how everything works. Gives you the opportunity to clean stuff up if you choose to. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down in the comment section. I'll gladly get back to you and help you out. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I also offer the online course to get your Texas license to carry a handgun. It's the four hour class broken down into segments and saves your progress so you can do it at your own pace. After completing the course, you can print your certificate. Then it'll help you locate an instructor close to you, no matter where you are in Texas, so you can complete the shooting portion of the course. This is all certified by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Check it out at reverendguns.com. If you have any questions or comments, please add them below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more firearms education.